Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Messing. And I'm Alex Rochley. And we're here presenting the okay. 3D Printing Game Changer. So what is 3D printing or add to manufacturing? Traditionally, when you make something, you use what's called subtractive manufacturing. You start with a block of material and you machine away. You make cuts and you drill holes and those kinds of things until you have the part that you want. With 3D printing or additive manufacturing, you're doing the opposite. You're starting with nothing and as demoed in this video, you start building up. You create each layer, one layer at a time, and you start printing. You build up until you have your final part. Because of this, you're able to actually make things that you couldn't make with traditional subtractive manufacturing. Uh, and in 3D printing, complexity is considered to be free. The idea is whatever you design, you can print. It's also known as rapid prototyping because you're able to make something by designing it and print it. And if it's not exactly what you want, you just change your model and then print it again. And you can do this until you have it so that you have exactly what you want. So it allows you to very easily make things, um, such as this hand that's demoed here. So first we have small scale 3D printing, which is what you just saw in that video. This is like a hot glue gun that moves around in the X and Y directions, depositing a layer of plastic. Then it'll lift up in the Z direction and deposit another layer of plastic. The common printers like you see here are aimed at the consumer market and they're designed to sit atop your desk next to your computer. They're about the size as a regular paper printer and have a build volume of about eight inches by eight inches by eight inches. Like that one right there. Um, so the material that they use is filament. It comes on a spool and it costs about $15 a pound. These printers can print about a tenth of a pound an hour and they cost around $500. Now we have large scale. This is the game changer. We call it BAM, which stands for Big Area Additive Manufacturing. This project got started last spring with, as a partnership between Oak Ridge National Lab and Cincinnati Incorporated. We developed this large scale 3D printer based on the existing laser cutter platform that Cincinnati already had. We removed the laser cutter hardware and installed the hardware to make it into a 3D printer. With this machine, we have 3,000 times the build volume of a standard desktop printer, and we can print 1,000 times faster. Uh, another addition is when you scale up a large printer, you usually lose speed, but we were able to gain speed by sacrificing resolution. Resolution refers to the layer height. Higher resolution means a thinner layer, whereas lower resolution is a thicker layer. Higher resolution is more desirable, but it's also slower because you have to do more layers. So what do we do? So Alex and I work at Oak Ridge National Laboratory uh, in part with these large scale 3D printers. So specifically I work on the software. And so what it does is it takes your model that you've designed and it converts into all the instructions that the printer needs in order to figure out how to actually make the part. It tells it where to go, where to put material, when to turn certain things on and off. This presented a number of new challenges when we scaled up 3D printing to large scale. When you make something on a small scale, there are a lot of issues that you just don't notice because the parts you're making are so small. Once you scale them up, we then had to come up with new techniques in order to design these parts and new techniques in order to actually slice them so that they would work and print correctly, so that they were close to what your model and what you actually wanted. Well, Andrew focuses mostly on software. My work focuses mostly on hardware. I'm involved with day-to-day -day machine operations to keep the machine running and install upgrades. Part of this is in testing out the new software changes that Andrew has made to see how they affect the printing process. I've been uh, involved with design work such as a Z-leveler, which helps keep the part flat during printing and it increases the layer-layer bond strength in the Z-direction. I also do some computer design for outside companies to make computer models that are optimized to print on our machine. This is Strati. On the left, we have the computer-generated model, and on the right is the actual thing. Just six months after we announced the 3D printing project, we made the world's first 3D printed car. Strati was the winning design in the local motors crowdsourcing design competition. In just 44 hours, we were able to print the main body of the car in a solid piece in front of over 100,000 people at the International Manufacturing Technology Show in Chicago. And just a few days later, the engineers at local motors were able to fully assemble this electric car and have it driving. This is a great demonstration of what our technology can do. And since that first car, Local Motors has made several more of them, 
several more versions of the strategy to show how repeatable and reliable our process is. So after the strategy, what's next? We'd continue to develop the technology and continue to improve the techniques that we'd use to make things. And so after that, a few months later, we started working on Ornell's 3D printed Shelby Cobra. This is a Shelby Cobra that is a replica of the original Shelby Cobra. It is made in part in honor of its 50th anniversary. It's made as an electronics test bed. So in addition to being a beautiful car that you may not actually be able to tell that it was 3D printed just by looking at, uh, it also is, can be used to uh, demonstrate and test uh, other vehicle technologies, such as wireless charging uh, and other things that ORNL and other laboratories develop. Uh, so we made it a little bit differently than how the Strati was made. The Strati was made as a uh, giant solid piece and then the fenders were put on afterwards, whereas the Cobra was made as an internal structure uh, where shell pieces, each of these shell pieces was then smoothed out and painted so that uh, it could look how it does. Um, and this involves several new uh, ideas in terms of how to actually smooth it and how to actually paint these kinds of materials. Uh, both the Strati and the Cobra are made using a carbon fiber reinforced ABS plastic. So it's basically it's the same plastic that you make Legos out of, uh, reinforced with carbon fiber to increase strength. Uh, so that way it could actually be made as a car. Um, this was actually able to be made very quickly. It took just six weeks to go from actually designing the entire car to printing, to assembly, finishing, painting, uh, the whole process. Uh, and then it was demoed at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit just this past January. Uh, it took just 24 hours to print every component uh, for this car. And weighing in at 1,900 pounds, it's actually significantly lighter than the original Cobra, which it's based off of. So while printing cars is really cool, that's not the only application for our technology. A big industry for us is tooling. Traditionally, the tooling market for making cars and airplanes is a multi-billion dollar business. This technology is outdated. It's very slow and very expensive. With our machine, we're able to make tools very quickly uh, and very cheaply. Like Andrew said earlier, complexity is free, so we can make a very complex mold with relative ease. In the center, we have a mold of the Cobra hood. We're able to make that whole mold in less than a week and it costs just a few thousand dollars. Another application is furniture. On the right, we have a chair. That chair can be printed in less than two hours and it can hold more than 500 pounds. If you 3D scan yourself, you can make a chair that's custom fit to you so you can have your own custom chair. Uh, on the left, we have a kayak. This is one of our most recent projects. We've just been working on that in the past few weeks. Uh, we've got it assembled and it's watertight, but the weather's not been great, so we haven't gone out on the lake. It's funny because Andrew and I are the only ones that actually fit in the kayak. It was undersized a little bit, so <laughs> we're excited to get to take, take it out on the lake and try it out. Um, a big thing with this is uh, manufacturing is, as we said, with tooling. Uh, so companies are really good at making uh, things that they can make thousands of and mass produce, but it's really expensive to make custom versions of anything because in order to make stuff or for a car, if you're to make the tooling for just one car, is a lot more expensive than actually making the tooling to mass produce the car. So when companies are trying to make uh, the prototypes for next year's version of one of their models, it's very expensive. But to use this process, you could actually decrease the cost significantly, saving companies uh, millions or even billions of dollars uh, in order for tooling um, and other things. And also with complexity being free, uh, you can actually make much larger parts that you couldn't actually make with other types of manufacturing. And then there's the future. 3D printing is an industry that is, has a lot of potential and is ever growing. With new companies springing up all the time, uh, it continues to grow larger and larger. So with large scale 3D printing, it's just the same. Uh, so Cincinnati is one of the first companies in order to kind of create a printer at this scale. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, ideas for continuing to uh, improve upon that. So first you have using different materials. So everything we've done so far with this has been a polymer, so a plastic that's been reinforced with various fibers in order to make it stronger and have the strength to actually make things. But what if you were to use other kinds of materials, such as ceramics or metals, so you have different properties and can go even stronger? Uh, you also want to go even larger. So right now, the BAM, the large dimension, is about 20 feet. 
But what if you had a printer that went up to 100 feet? So instead of printing cars, you're printing boats or planes or even buildings. Better resolution and faster. So the goal is always to have it so that what you print is exactly what you design. Um, and right now, printing uh, causes striations. Uh, you can see the individual layers. But the goal is to, decrease, to increase the resolution and decrease the layer height so that eventually it be as close to possible as being smooth. So that way it would look and feel just the same as if you were machining a part. So that way you would actually have exactly what you modeled is exactly what you get. But in doing this, you still want to maintain speed. Uh, when we made the very first uh, prototype version of the Strati, it took us about a week to print uh, around the clock. Uh, in the end, it took less than two days to make. But the goal is to increase the speed so that you also take very little time. Instead of taking uh, months or weeks in order to make things, the goal is to get it down to days or hours. So better processing of models is more of a software thing. As I said, the goal is always to have it so that exactly what you design is what you make. And current processes don't allow for that. Um, currently, all the softwares that are out there use an approximation of the model. So they don't use the exact model itself. And so what you get is close but it's not exactly what you designed. And so then you have to go back and you have to machine it a little bit just to get exactly what you want. So the goal is to continue to improve upon it so that exactly what you imagine is exactly what you have in the end. So these are the TED letters. Each letter takes about two hours to print and they're made out of the same carbon fiber reinforced ABS material as the cars. Now you're probably thinking, why would we make a car out of ABS? That can't be very durable. Well, do you remember the last time you stepped on a Lego brick? I bet it hurt, and I bet you didn't break it. And so now we're going to hit one of these letters and show you how durable it is. Pretty strong, huh? It's still in one piece. So thank you for your time.